Hey there, this is Penguin's Recordings, and today I'm going to guide you on how to use Position Interpolator in VRML 2.0. So, as usual, you will need two things to follow me. First off is VRML Pad, the version I'm using is 2.1. You can use other notepads, other notepad applications like Notepad, but you have the added value of syntax highlighting and the ability to run your application through VRML pad so it makes things a whole lot easier the other thing you're going to need is Cortana 3D's plugin for your web browser because your web browser is going to display your project or program that you create so you can download it from here alright let's get to it we're going to animate a box using position interpolator so first and foremost we're going to create a transform node okay alright we have a transform node I'm going to name it um, box okay I'll name it box so the transform node is named box inside there we have children and this is where I create the shape, the actual box shape. So, shape, appearance, I'm just going to have a default appearance with the default material. Geometry is going to be box. And I don't set anything inside it because we're going to have it use the default size. I'm going to name it animation. Animation.wrl okay so we have the transform and we have the shape it's created let's check if it exists I'm going to press F5 and there you have it you have the default sized shape of a box so I'll find it dandy now let's create the timer as with every interpolator you will need a timer so we're going to, we're going to create a time sensor and I'm going to call this time sensor timer. All right. Don't forget to save. In time sensor, we're going to do cycle interval. This is how long the animation is going to take, or how long the timer is going to uh, keep time. I'll set it to six seconds. Mm, start time minus one. Stop time zero. And loop. We're going to set it to false. I don't want it to loop. Not initially, at least. Alright, so we have our transform node, our box, and our time sensor. Now, we're going to create the color, eh, no, not color, sorry, position interpolator. So, position interpolator. Inside the interpolator, as usual, we have key and key value. Inside key is where, if you had watched my previous video on color interpolators, is where keyframes are held. So let's say I want the box to go to the right, and then back, and then to the left again, and then return to its original position. So we have four keyframes. So start at second zero. I'm going to bring it up by, let's say, two or three, I'll make it three, and zero, six, and then one. This might not be enough, but we'll try first. So we have four keyframes, one at second zero, one at a third of the second, one at a sixth of the second, and then the final second. Key value, we're going to start in here. This is where we put the coordinates, the translation of the box. So I'm going to start the box off at the origin which is zero 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 okay this is the first position now I'm going to move it to the right I'm gonna move it to the right let's say by four alright so this moves it along the x-axis to the right by four now while we're still at that position on the right on the fourth position of the x-axis I want to move it back by four so we're gonna put it at minus four this will bring it back down the z-axis by four 
and the last but not least we're going to move it to the left back again so it will be back at x0 zero, y0 zero, but still on the negative z axis 4 so as you can see it's not enough we're only going to have it move to the right back and then to the left but it doesn't go back to the origin but for now this should do now comes the part where we have to connect all these things together for it to work and to do that we do routing or route first and foremost we have timer dot fraction changed to position interpolator which is oh yes I didn't name it I need to name position interpolator I'll name it as box animate box there we go animate box dot set fraction alright route now we're going to connect after we've connected the timer to the position interpolator now we need to connect the position interpolator to the box that's why the box has to be inside a transform so animate box dot value changed to what we named it as box box dot translation you see the options just now there was translation scale and center these would not exist if your shape was outside of a transform node if it's inside transform node then you have these options which is what we need okay we set translation save and I'm going to hit F5 let's see alright it doesn't run because I've, start, I've put the start time at minus 1 so let's fix that I'm going to put it at 0 start time is at 0 loop time is at stop let's see what happens if we set this to true there we go when we set the loop to true we get to see the animation it must not start though when it's on false hmm. well as you can see the position interpolator works it starts from point zero zero goes to the right four back four and then to the left four but it doesn't jump back to the original position instead it, 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 it teleports so to have it move nicely or smoothly I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm going to put it back at the origin. So refresh. And as you can see, it moves to the left. Now it moves in a very nice pattern. Let's zoom out. Goes to the right by four, back by four, left by four, and then back to the origin. Let's say you want the animation to start when you click it when you hit when you press on the box so for this let's add a touch sensor just like in color interpolator I'm gonna name it touch box and it's going to be a touch sensor but the touch sensor cannot be outside of the transform because if it's outside when you run the application later on when you have many objects what you see here this finger icon it will be all over the screen anything that you click any any object that you've made inside your WRL file will be affected by a touch sensor we want the touch sensor to only affect the box so we put this inside the transforms children section so the touch sensor is inside the box so now it is exclusive to only the box but as you can see when you click run it's still running on its own whether or not you click it, it doesn't do anything so we must connect the touch sensor which we named touch box and touch time we're going to set it to the timer this will start the timer start time there we go and we must change this minus one there we go so now it should not run until you hit it All right. so as you can see the box does not move 
let's click on it there you go it goes to the right to the back to the left and then back to the origin and since loop is set on true it will keep on doing this you set loop to false you run it and it will only do one cycle it will come back to the origin and then it will stop you want it to run again you hit it simple as that let's say it's running too slow for you you want it to run faster let's put it to two seconds it's going to be pretty fast let's find out how fast oh it's extremely fast you can also have it run a whole lot slower let's say you can add it, you can put it at 20 seconds 20 seconds I don't know if we'll even be able to see movement let's see oh we do but it's extremely slow so to recap to use the position interpolator you must have an object inside a transform node that you want to change a position and you must have a timer so that your position knows when to change the position of that object so basically what you need are two things when it comes to routing you must connect the timer to the position interpolator and the, inter the position interpolator must be connected to the transform node that contains the shape you want to affect the touch sensor here is more like an added value you know you want interactivity instead of a non-stop animation from the get-go having the touch sensor will allow users to click on something and have the animation either play once or play in an infinite loop depending on how you set it and that's pretty much it for position position interpolator in VRML 2.0